when Europe colonized, what they did was to remove gold and silver coins from the market, which had been used for thousands of years. And they replaced it with new money that they had created. And today's lecture is meant to describe to you that new money that was European. At the end of the Second World War, the conquerors, the winners, the victors of the war invited the rest of the world to come and join with them in a conference in Bretton Woods, in upstate New York, to create a new international monetary system. And uh, it will be interesting for those of you who want to further research the subject to go and find the uh, documents relating to that conference and read them. Britain and the United States dominated the conference. France was there and France had good thinking. Yes, I have to credit France with good thinking. But France was overpowered in that conference. And so it became an Anglo-American conference, really. The Americans were led by a man named Mr. White. And of course, the British were led by John Maynard Keynes. And they decided that the new monetary system which will be based on European paper money, paper currency, or some, sometimes called fiat money, must have some link with gold and therefore link with integrity. Once there's a link with gold, there is some measure of integrity. And because Britain's sun was setting and a new sun had risen to replace the British sun, the sterling pound, which previously was the international currency in the world, and London, which was the capital, the financial capital of the world, was now replaced and the US dollar was chosen. And hence Washington now became the international financial capital. The link with the, with the goal was that the US dollar would be redeemable. To redeem means you can take the paper and have it converted to gold. Redeemable. The US dollar was redeemable in gold. And they fixed the rate at $35 US for one ounce of gold. But you and I could not redeem our dollars. Only governments, only central banks could do that. And so the United States government under international law was obliged to redeem dollars for gold at $35 an ounce. One of the major pillars of an international order is called Pacta Sunt Servanda, the treaty obligations must be honored. And that's the first verse, the very first verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5 of the Quran. When you give your word, you must keep your word. And so the United States had an obligation under international law to keep their word, to redeem US dollars for gold at $35 an ounce whenever a central bank or a government wanted it redeemed. And that was meant to demonstrate to the world that this monetary system had some integrity because there was a link with gold. Or what about all the rest of the other 
paper money in the world? What about the French franc? What about the German mark? The Pakistani rupee? The Malaysian ringgit? The Singapore dollar? Brunei dollar? The agreement was that all the other currencies in the world, paper currencies, would have their value determined on the basis of their link with the dollar. And so if you ask, well, what's the value of the Malaysian ringgit? You do not answer and say that the Malaysian ringgit is so many ringgits to one ounce of gold. No, sir. Only Uncle Sam has that honor. <laughs> the Malaysian ringgit is worth 3.04 ringgits to one dollar. That's the answer. You do not give the value of the ringgit converted to francs. No. Because this monetary system was meant to entrench the United States of America as a new ruling state in the world to replace Britain. So it was not mere economics. It was not mere monetary economics. It was also politics. It was also world politics. It was a monetary system which was being crafted which would entrench the United States as the ruling state in the world. From that conference, which was called the Bretton Woods Conference, emerged the Bretton Woods Accord. And if you are a student of finance, of monetary economics, you must study that Bretton Woods Accord. From that Bretton Woods Accord emerged the International Monetary Fund as the world's central bank <laughs> and the international monetary fund had rules which required every member state to deposit with the fund listen carefully 25% of all your gold reserves. In the process of delivering to the International Monetary Fund 25% of all the gold that Pakistan had. Number one, the impression was created that this monetary system is based on gold. The gold is there. The actual fact was, they wanted to know how much gold you had, number one. And number two, they had a strategy. The articles of agreement of the International Monetary Fund, listen carefully, prohibited the use of gold as money. Why? Is there anyone underneath the clouds and underneath the sun who could answer that question? <laughs>